it Star Wars fans and welcome back to another RebelScum.com video and today I am here at the Hasbro booth. We're standing in front of all of these lovely new reveals. Um, stuff that I'm most excited about of course is the Black Series and then there's other stuff. Um, okay, I guess we'll talk about the other stuff. So we got a lot of new Black Series reveals. We even got some new Black Series prop replica reveals. Um, role play items like the uh, artillery stormtrooper. It was only a matter of time before we finally got the artillery. I, I when we saw the artillery trooper and we already had the new incinerator trooper, I was like, yeah. okay, we're getting the artillery yeah. trooper. They're not gonna not do the other Mando trooper. So, uh, Patrick, tell us about what you do at Hasbro and what got you into Star Wars. Absolutely, yeah. What got me into Star Wars at Hasbro or originally? Originally, and then, yeah. sure, the Hasbro no. story too would be great. Absolutely, yeah, no, originally I remember playing with the figures when I was a kid. We play with my first one, so that dates, yeah. I guess that, that kind of pinpoints my age a little, a little bit. bit. Uh, but yeah, I remember playing with Weequay and others. Uh, and then I just really got into the publishing uh, when I was a kid. We were chatting about this the other day. Uh, heir to the Empire, I've said Joris Chaboth is the figure I want in the line. <laughs> True Ship Akura, Courtship of Princess Leia. We were even chatting about, I read the Splinter of a Mind's Eye, which was that like faux sequel to A New Hope. So love Star Wars as a kid. My best friend and I in high school watched all the movies. Uh, and then, yeah, Hasbro is amazing. I, I worked uh, in marketing and got an offer to come here to Hasbro. and was so excited uh, that it was in Star Wars. And yeah, so I, I work on our marketing team at Hasbro. That's what I do. It's, uh, for the two of you working on this brand, it has to be a dream come true in one aspect, but also working for Hasbro, the big action figure company, probably ar arguably the biggest action figure company in the world, um, has to be a dream come true in another sense. So um, Chris, tell us about your yeah. You know, what What got you into Star Wars? And then, of course, tell us what got you into Hasbro. Well, what got me into Star Wars was I was I was the right age kid for all of it. And from the original Star Wars movie all the way through, I was it was right there at the right age, all that. And played with all of it, was just deep dive into it. I was that kid. Um, what got me into it at, at Hasbro was, and I've spent 30 years now working on Star Wars products. And the opportunity at Hasbro showed up and it was, I've said it before, I, I couldn't write a better job for myself if I was just making stuff up. It, it, the universe just aligned and everything came together. The opportunity for growth and movement within Hasbro, the company's values, all that. And then you throw Star Wars on top of that. And, oh man, I'm, yeah, it's living the dream. It really is. So you guys work on various projects within Hasbro, of course. Give us a little bit of an insight into the mind's eye of what you guys go through in order to simply get one product done, like one action figure. What What is that like through uh, sculpting? Is, is it something that you guys have sculpted first and then you know, just in case, and then someone goes, hey, we kind of want to do this character at some point, and someone's like, oh, I got that ready to go. Or is it uh, you guys go through the character list first, or what's hot right now, which show is coming up, or which show we actually have footage of and we can actually start pulling from, um, and start going from there. How, how does that work exactly? Uh, it's, yeah, it's, we don't have enough time on this interview <laughs> to go through it all, but, and roughly speaking, I mean, we sit down as a team and we kind of align on which figures we want to do first. And, but that's, I say as a team, but that's a big team. That's us, that's Lucasfilm, that's that's looking at, at how much money we have to do stuff and where we want to do it and time and what shows are coming, all that stuff. So it's a big complicated selection process for what we do. And then we then we take that and we, we go through concept, how exactly that figure is going to play out. Is, he, is, is Anna going to have her, a mechanical hand and all that sort of thing? Like what are the little intricacies of how that figure or or toy plays out. We run that through everything, make sure everybody's aligned with that. With Lucasfilm, we check, go through that stuff. We sculpt it. We work with our vendors to make sure we can produce it, make sure it's right and gonna be in match up to the standards of everything we've done before. We work on deco and make sure the deco aligns with how we wanna, how we wanna present that toy and, and that we can, we can maintain those standards that we've set for ourselves and, and live up to expectations for the toys. And so we do that, then we move into production and we look at first shots. Everybody knows what a first shot is. 
And so we're, we're looking at fit of figures and all that. We, and it's just, it's incremental steps every time and just moving it a little closer and a little closer to final product. And that's packaging, the whole team, everybody's involved. We've got packaging people and some fans who have been here have been lucky enough to meet some of our packaging designers, some of our model shop members. It's, it's a massive group of people working on this to get even a single figure through. So. Now, one of the things that I'm sure caught a lot of fans off guard, because one of the questions that even came up in the panel yesterday was, uh, are you guys, you, you guys seem to have been playing catch up because, you know, not every figure is, of course, ready to go by the time a new show or movie premieres um, ever since Disney Plus launched. Now, of course, we know that there's a whole process to this, right? There's a whole process to which characters get prioritized over others. Obviously, you got to hit the main ones. You got to hit Obi-Wan. You got to hit Din. You got to hit Luke. Those are, are, are pillar characters that always have to get produced. They're the main characters. We know that's going to happen. But can you, can you shed some light into why things are the way they are? Obviously, right now, supply chains are tough. They're a mess. Yep. But aside from that, there, there's more than just supply chains and other reasons why we were waiting so long for new characters or new well, figures. And uh, you're still got so many new characters that too. And and but you're still constantly putting stuff yeah. out. It's not like you guys have stopped putting anything out, which is it's kind of weird why that question keeps coming up. Yeah. Uh, well, where's all the new characters at? Well, they're coming. Yeah. You just just be patient. So, um, so I think it's it, it's not it's not so easy to just put supply chain challenges aside. Like we've said in the past, it takes twelve to eighteen months to produce a figure. That's just longer now. The actual yeah. development process, they're doing it better than ever. But now the time to actually ship something is elongated. So just when we see stuff, we're still seeing it at the same relative point in time. It takes longer to bring it to market. I think the other thing is that, and again, we've said in the past, like looking at the last several years. We saw Luke Skywalker in Episode 7 on screen the same time everyone else did. We saw Grogu in Episode 1 of Mandalorian the same time everyone else did. And we trust Lucasfilm implicitly. Like, at that, that appearance of Grogu in that first episode was so magical, and no one would wish that away. And as part of that, it was kind of keeping it under tight lock and key. So I think we love those magical moments. And if that means the figures are a little later, that's something we totally trust Lucasfilm on. Well, and, and, and I like in a sense, and I'm sure I might catch some flack for this, and that's okay. Um, but I like in a sense that it, it's kind of like a call and response thing versus just, okay, here's Obi-Wan. Here's all these other new reveal characters that, you, that you're going to get excited about and they're not in production yet before the episode one drops because then that stuff's not getting spoiled for the viewer exactly yeah and and that's something that a lot of collectors don't take into account when they're when they're hey why isn't that out yet why don't i have that out yet it, it they're not taking that into account that it by lucasfilm not spoiling that and giving you guys it that means that the guys who are out there data mining on social yeah, media and yeah. posting, oh, here's this new Hasbro leak. Yeah. Um, well, now that character just got spoiled. You know, yeah. Grogu could have been spoiled had you guys had Grogu sitting in Walmart or Target systems. Exactly. Everybody Be gets so uptight about spoilers online. Right. But, but nobody, nobody's thinking about it in the terms you just explained. Yeah. Right. It's nobody. Like it's, the same th it's the same thing. Nobody considers that spoilers happen through toys all the time. You know, whether it's a, uh, we know this character is going to be in it. Yeah, well, we don't know how that character is going to look. And somebody could just be sitting there being so excited to see it on screen for the first time. And then someone data leaks it from online and, oh, here we go. We post it. Everybody take a look. And then people start judging it before they even see it. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And then I think that's balanced by, you know, obviously Obi-Wan aired. We have all these figures. We've got the HasLab lightsaber. We have all the Lola products. So, so I think there is a balance there and we are getting back to having product ready to show day and date. Uh, and hopefully kind of as things get more back to normal, we'll get closer back to having product on shelves timed with new entertainment. That's definitely the goal. And, and my point that I've been building up to with all this is thank you so much for all of the work you guys do. I know you don't get that enough. No. I see the comments. I well, see the live streams, too. One of the nice things about being here <coughs> is there's just 
those sort of interactions with bands is right. amazing and we've been away from that for so long I think it's it's done a world of wonders for the team just to kind of get back into the flow and be re-energized by this right it's, I, it's an important part of Star Wars is the fan community and the interactions with them and we, know, we know it's a big responsibility what we do and we take that seriously and so you know when we're not when we have things to improve on we definitely want to hear about it and, and make things better for the community in the future yeah please make it constructive criticism not I mean that that helps us all and that's that's and, the kind of we enjoy it I mean it's that's the kind of goal we try to strive for here yeah. with the kind of content we produce on rebelscum.com and with with my thanks I wanted to say thank you guys because I of course we expected Obi-Wan to be ready Ewan re revealed Obi-Wan on May 4th yeah. but you guys caught me totally by surprise yesterday during the Hasbro panel that's seeing good. seeing Lolo at Black Series was I was just like, oh my gosh, that is so cool. Yep. Yeah, they did leave that bubble open for a really awesome reason. Fifth Brother, Grand Inquisitor coming out so quickly. I mean, I know we're waiting like a year for it, but so quickly when the show just started, like I was expecting two or three characters just based off of, you know, our, our experience with Mando and season two of Mando and so on and Book of Boba Fett. I, I was only expecting like a couple of figures like Obi-Wan and Reva, okay, I saw those get announced. I was like, cool, I expected those. Can't wait to pick them up. Can't wait to review them on the, on the website. And then you guys just hit the nail on the head with all these awesome more reveals. Plus, well, you can see even that, more. Yeah, well, and you can see these are these are finished products. Right. So, like, it really speaks to the logistical challenges that we're up against. We can have product ready in time with the show. It's just a matter of getting enough of it here for everybody. The other thing is, it's weird. Celebration is such a huge event. It's weird to say it's just the beginning, but you know, we've we've announced with Lucasfilm Obi Wan Wednesdays. Like this, this is just the beginning. There are going to yeah. be new reveals uh, each Wednesday throughout the course of the series. We are going to have more new stuff for each of our fan bases throughout the next several weeks. So, so this is not it. There's more to come. Right. Yeah. I, I know my fans who love the Vintage Collection are excited to see more of that, too. I know we got a few VC figures announced, including Lola and VC. You guys really got all of the Lola love. Yeah, she is um, tiny. Like, y'all yeah. were well ahead of the game on that one. Can't wait to pick up every Lola. I'm sure my wife's going to make me get all of them for her. Um, but... Even in VC, she's so tiny, but she looks so great. Yeah, yeah. It's so There's a exciting. Lot of on that little tiny figure there. Yep. Yeah. Emily does a great job. But uh, then, a, a, then again, of course, a shift from Obi Wan. You guys already have stuff ready for Jedi Survivor, the new upcoming video game, the anticipated sequel to Jedi Fallen Order. Just announced yesterday. The you title. revealed pipeline reveals for upcoming video games as well. Um, the Knights of the Old Republic remake. I know a lot of fans. Yeah are really looking forward to that. I'm sure you especially, It's it's got to be a dream come true being a fan who's uh, so well-rooted in even expanded universe stuff to see more of these expanded universe pieces come to life. What is that like as an expanded universe fan? No, absolutely. And Eric on our team has been a tireless advocate for video game characters and we've progressively gotten more in. But yeah, I know it's Star Wars. Chris has said this before. Star Wars is Obviously, the movies are the heritage. Disney Plus is critical, but it's this broad universe of so many different characters in all the different corners of the galaxy. And, you know, there's a lot to pull from, but we try to pull in all the critical ones and, and build out an expansive line. So, so it's really awesome seeing those come in as well. Guys, we're just about out of time here. I want to thank you again so much for having us here and getting to ch chat with you guys. Yeah. Um, check these guys out. Whenever they go live with their streams, the Hasbro Pulse Rally streams are really awesome. Please, please, please. They love to get your feedback, but just like you guys do on the rebelscum.com forums, give them constructive criticism. Give them the criticism of, well, I'm excited you guys did this character, but what about this character? Or yeah. what about this other character? You want to hear? Yeah. And when they say, hey, we can't speak to future projects right now, that's not them <laughs> saying, hey, we don't care, we don't want to talk about that character, it's, the answer really is, is we might be working on that right now. Right. That's we, what that actually means. We don't means. want to melt your brains. We had yeah. someone in the booth, I think, asking us all about a Black Series Ala Secura figure, and we were like, that's a great idea, we should consider that. And then 12 hours well, later, yeah. it there it is on that. the panel. I think it was yesterday morning. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Oh, I guess I do have one more question. Absolutely. Yeah. One of my favorite lines to collect was the 30th anniversary Ralph McQuarrie set. Yes. Okay. So... How long have you guys 
been pining to get some Black Series ones, because that's something I've wanted for a very long time, was to have those guys in Black Series. But how long have you guys been working on the possibility of doing some Ralph McQuarrie characters in Black Series or even VC? I think for all, forever. Yeah. I mean, it's Nine it's, years since the Black Series started? Since it started, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's one of those things that's, I mean, we're all passionate about it. It's finding the, the right timing and the right place to bring it forward to really make it meaningful. And I think what we did with the the Obi-Wan and Vader pack, I think is it's a perfect kind of coalescence of all those those things. All right, guys. A lot of these new reveals go live when? June 1st at 1 p.m. Eastern time on Hasbro Pulse. So get on there, get those pre-orders in before they go out because you know they're going to sell out. These characters are too exciting not to sell, especially Fifth Brother and the Grand Inquisitor who have been very anticipated since Rebels. So we finally got Fifth Brother. We finally have Grand Inquisitor coming. Get those guys pre-ordered because you know you got to get them to complete your set. Stay tuned for more awesome Hasbro reveals. You know you're going to see more Hasbro reveal news on rebelscum.com as it comes out. So watch those Obi-Wan Wednesdays. We'll see you guys later. We'll see you another time. Don't forget to like and subscribe and may the force be with all of you, you rebel scum.